If you were to take the best features of human stem cell transplant and the inverse vaccine for MS that we've been talking about, you might come out with something like what I'm going to show you today. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of You and Me and Multiple Sclerosis. My name is Pam. I've been living with multiple sclerosis for nearly 40 years. And I've been putting out some videos about the promising new development of something called an inverse vaccine for multiple sclerosis that actually changes components of your own immune system to keep them from attacking your myelin. We know that a similar kind of idea goes on with human stem cell transplant. And in theory, that would be something that would last a lifetime because it would really change your immune system. But now I see that there's yet another experimental therapy that's going to go into clinical trial pretty soon. And it does something to your regulatory T cells. Now the immune system, I will say, is a very complicated thing. I know that I haven't really gone into detail about that. And if you'd like, I can make a video that just focuses on the immune system and how it functions and how it functions improperly with MS. But in the meantime, I do want to play just a short video for you to explain what these regulatory T cells are and how they fit into the scheme of things. So let's take a look at that. Adaptive immune cells also derive from the lymphoid lineage and are called lymphocytes. First up are B cells. The main role of these is to make antibodies, which are incredibly specific Y-shaped proteins that can bind to and coat pathogens and foreign particles. Antibody binding blocks pathogens from entering cells and marks them for destruction by phagocytes. However, B cells require help from T cells to become fully activated. There are three main types of T cells, and they are defined by their functional role as well as their expression of identifying surface proteins, CD8 or CD4. Here, CD stands for cluster of differentiation, which is a designation that immunologists use to name various molecules that are expressed on the surface of immune cells. We will see a variety of CD numbers throughout this series. Killer T cells express CD8 and are able to very specifically identify and kill self cells that are cancerous or infected. Helper T cells express CD4 and are called helper cells because they are important for helping to activate B cells. They are also critical for secreting cytokines to guide the immune response, depending on the type of threat. Regulatory T cells also express CD4, and these cells secrete cytokines to tone down the strength of the immune response. They can even kill killer T cells if they start getting out of control. After encountering a certain pathogen once, T and B cells can live for years in the body, so the next time they see that pathogen, these cells are able to mount a faster and stronger reaction, allowing the body to control the infection more quickly. Okay, well I hope that gave you some background so that now when we go and we look through this article, it will make a little bit more sense to you. Maybe you can visualize kind of how this new treatment option would work. Here's the article. It just came out in Multiple Sclerosis News today on July 12th of 2024, and it's titled Phase 1 Trial of ABA 101 for Progressive MS Gets FDA OK. So that means that FDA has given them the green light to go ahead and begin clinical trials. And then they say first in human study of Abata therapy expected to launch by year's end. So it looks like all systems are go. And they say that Abata Therapeutics is expected to launch a phase one clinical trial by the end of the year to test ABA 101, its experimental therapy for progressive multiple sclerosis, after getting a green light from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. The FDA approved Abata's investigational new drug, or IND, 
Application for ABA 101 in Progressive MS, a patient population with few therapeutic options. I'll say that again. ABA 101 works by modifying a type of immune cell known as regulatory T cells or Tregs. That decision cleared the way for this first in human trial, which will test the treatment candidate in patients with progressive MS. Receiving IND clearance for ABA 101 validates our unique approach of leveraging the natural role of Tregs in the immune system to treat autoimmune diseases where current treatments are either insufficient or non-existent. Richard M. Ransohoff, MD, co-founder and advisor of Abata, said in a company press release, ABA 101 works by modifying Tregs immune cells. ABA 101 is being developed for progressive MS patients who have imaging evidence of ongoing inflammatory tissue injury and are HLA DRB1 asterisk 15 colon 01 positive. Meaning, thankfully they're going to tell us what it means, meaning they have a genetic variation that affects their immune system's ability to recognize its own body's cells. This patient population, according to Abada, is believed to right now be about 45,000 people in the United States. The therapy aims to harness the unique biology of T cells, a type of immune cells. These cells have a specialized receptor on their surface that recognizes very specific molecular targets. While receptor binding for most T cells leads to increased inflammation, for a subset of T-cells known as Tregs, receptor binding leads to the secretion of molecules that instead decrease inflammation. Tregs are known to reduce excessive immune responses in autoimmune diseases such as MS. During ABA 101 treatment, Tregs are collected from individual patients and modified to have a receptor that recognizes damaged myelin. Okay, so they're using your own cells, and that really does reduce the chance that there's going to be any kind of rejection thing going on. Myelin damage is a hallmark of MS, as we well know. When reintroduced into patients, these modified Tregs will selectively move through the body looking specifically for damaged myelin in the central nervous system, or CNS, comprised of the brain, spinal cord, and optic nerves. Once they identify a lesion with damaged myelin, these Tregs get activated and an anti-inflammatory immune response is initiated. This reduction in inflammation potentially blocks the buildup of disease-promoting pro-inflammatory immune cells that degrade myelin and possibly even promote myelin repair. Because these cells are modified to target the CNS, Abata believes it is unlikely that they will globally reduce immune functioning a common negative side effect of several available treatments for autoimmune diseases and therefore offer a strong safety profile. Across the MS treatment landscape, there are no effective therapies that address the CNS compartmentalized inflammation driving progressive multiple sclerosis. ABA 101 is uniquely positioned to ameliorate this progressive pathology disease mechanisms as well as promote repair and clinical improvement, Ransohoff said. Abada also hopes ABA 101 will be durable, suggesting the treatment approach based on a tissue-specific Tregs has the potential for a single dose to last for years or even a lifetime. Samantha Singer, president and CEO of Abada, called ABA 101 a significant advancement in the field as one of the first tissue-targeted Treg cell therapies for autoimmune disease and said the company is looking forward to testing it in the upcoming Phase 1 trial. And I'll have you know I did go out to clinicaltrials.gov to see if that was up at all yet, and I did not find it. That doesn't mean it wasn't there, but I tried all the keywords I could think of and did not find it. But it will be coming, so keep your eyes peeled for it. In preclinical studies, ABA 101 was shown to be safe and demonstrated tissue-specific trafficking, persistence, and robust suppression of inflammation, supporting its potential therapeutic effect, Singer said. Now I'm going to play part of an interview with Richard Ranzahoff, 
of Abada Therapeutics. It's interesting to me that he and his team understood that we can't cure MS until we figure out how to deal with progression independent of relapse activity, or PIRA, and you're going to hear him talk about that and how they took the technology forward from there. All of MS involves damage to myelin, which is the fatty covering around nerve fibers that helps them conduct efficiently. It's like an insulator. Now, why haven't we noticed PIRA? Why haven't we noticed these types of pathology? How did they all fly under the radar and escape our attention for so many years? The reason is partly that PIRA is rather subtle. And another part is that conventional MRI brain scans do not detect that type of tissue injury. So when the neurologist doesn't see anything changing on the brain scan and the patient says, oh, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm better or worse, the neurologist tends to think things are going okay. So if we sort of tie this together, MS patients, even early in disease and even under therapy with incredibly effective agents that stop relapse pathology, are undergoing PIRA. And then if we look under the hood at the mechanism, we see that these meningeal aggregates of inflammatory autoimmune white blood cells cause demyelination in the gray matter and the white matter. And we believe that that is what contributes to PIRA. Help, help explain the relevance of these new findings to some of the approaches that Abada is progressing in their MS uh, program. And, and what gives you optimism about Abada's approach uh, in light of this um, uh, understanding of mechanism? It's that we have not only got new ideas, we have new tools. The conventional MRI just doesn't see progressive pathology in action. So it's really hard to tell what's going on with the patient because it's slow, it's subtle, and you don't have any indicator on the brain scan that it's happening. Now, about four years ago, our scientific advisor at Abada, Daniel Wright, who heads up the MS imaging unit at NIH and uses the MRI scanner to investigate the mechanisms underlying MS, he reported a technique for imaging these chronic active demyelinating white matter lesions. The term that he used uh, for this type of lesion is kind of long, paramagnetic rim lesion. And so we decided to just call them PRLs. Um, sometimes we call them pearls because we think they're really valuable. Um, what Dr. Reich showed is that these PRL lesions are present in about 55% of all MS patients, that they are associated with a worse clinical course, and that they are not responsive to the therapies that control the relapse pathology. So put that all together, these characteristics are consistent with our idea that PRLs are part of the cause for PIRA symptomatic worsening. The PRL technology is incredibly game-changing for clinical development in patients because for the first time we can see, in quotes, the underlying pathology in a living patient. Now, even before launch, Abada was thinking about these concepts and we were convinced that the PRL technology could be transformative. In fact, we proposed right at the get-go that we would select patients for inclusion in our clinical trials based on the presence of PRLs. This way, we can identify and treat patients who are the most likely to be able to benefit from our treatment 
Because what we're trying to do with our therapy is disperse and disable these meningeal inflammatory aggregates. I lived through the entire evolution of treatment for the relapse activity of MS, from nothing at all to really highly effective. I saw a similar process at that time because it was the MRI used to detect newly forming lesions that really made the difference in developing therapies for the relapse activity in MS. We think the PRL technique has the same potential to transform our treatment development for progressive pathology. So you ask, why am I optimistic? We have a game-changing tool. And ever since our MS program was first proposed about three years ago, the evidence has just piled up and up and up that has strengthened and heightened our excitement about bringing this Treg therapy to MS patients. So Richard, is, is, it, um, is it fair to say we have a better understanding of disease mechanism, we have um, some new tools for detection, and we of course have a promising new therapy. Maybe take it up 40,000 feet and, and, and summarize it for me in, in sort of more simple terms. The f I think the first point to make is that if you don't know the enemy, you're in big trouble. Um, I think we have finally identified the enemy uh, in why people with MS still undergo this progressive disease, uh, even though we've covered and controlled relapse pathology so well. And so this concept of PIRA and the identification of it, that's point number one. We know the enemy now. Point number two is not just to identify the enemy, but to understand the enemy. And I think our insight into the mechanisms that underlie PIRA and progressive pathology is advanced light years ahead of where we used to be. And then number three, we have this technology to identify and follow in living patients what's going on at the pathological level using the MRI scanner. That's what changed the game before. I think that's what's going to change the game again. So the, the last point I want to make, I really do want to bring this back to Abada, is these remarkable developments in cell therapy, in understanding Tregs, uh, and ultimately the achievements uh, that Abada has, has uh, brought to fruition just in its short life in manufacturing our cell product, uh, and, and getting it ready to, to go to the clinic. So we're very excited uh, as we move towards our first in-human trial. Well, there you go. What do you think of all that? Do, is that? How does that compare in your mind to stem cell transplant or to this inverse vaccine that we've been talking about? It sounds good from a safety profile, which to me is always something that I jump right to. I want to know what are the possible downsides and so far, they haven't really identified any. The clinical trials will give them a much better idea if their early optimism is warranted, but that's yet to be seen. And as I said, I don't see any sign that the clinical trial has been posted yet. If I do see it, I will post it on my community page so that everyone gets a chance to look at it and possibly even sign up for it if the recruiting is in your area. But that's all I have for you for now. So until my next video, please do take really good care of yourself. <music>